London's Regent Street, now with added technology. Beacons, small transmitters that are like real-world hyperlinks, sending you virtual data based on your real location. It's prime shopping real estate, and this spring around 100 stores have installed iBeacons to beckon us customers inside. Yes, install their special app, have Bluetooth turned on, and you too can be pinged with personalised content up and down nearly two kilometres of shops. There's lots of different beacons. All these boxes house a similar component, essentially a little Bluetooth low-energy transmitter there. It's when you use your phone. The closer your phone gets to the transmitter, this then sends out a little signal that an app running on your phone goes, aha, I want to pay for something, or aha, here's some information. And that's basically it. But beacons don't have to just ping you adverts when you pass. All they do is transmit data based on how close you are. Here in London's uber-trendy Brixton, one coffee house has upped its hipster quotient considerably by installing a beacon by the counter. Now, with the right app running, a screen pops up when I'm close to the till so I can pay for my skinny flat white. Although it does have to be in the local currency, the Brixton Pound. We're actually the first uh, kind of network of shops to, to be using beacons for, for payments. Up to now, uh, beacons have tend to be used in larger um, businesses, uh, mainly for marketing. When you go into a shop, it will automatically pop up and tell you where you are. You might be sat down actually having your um, coffee and you see that there's a big queue. You know how much the coffee costs. The beacon tells you where you are. You just have to write in the amount and click send and then you've, you've paid. You can walk out. You're going to see a lot more of beacons. One museum uses them to trigger audio guides, so there are ways to use them outside of marketing. Our new technology, it's itching to be played with. I wanted to try something. So, over coffee with developer Jakob Tomanik, we hatched a plan. The beacons in Regent Street broadcast out into the street. So, I thought we could pick up their broadcasts and make music with it, instead of just being encouraged to buy new jeans. Jakob agreed. So we gave our weekend to the project. Jakob coded, I composed, and then mapped the existing beacons in Regent Street using an Android app. And now it was time to try it out in the wild. So we can see a beacon ID, a major and minor number, and that basically allows us to uh, trigger our own app and play some music. Right. Uh, all this is is just to record it. Otherwise, you could just put your own headphones in. But this is one for me, one for BBC Click. And as a world first, these are Regent Street's beacons mapped in music. Each beacon is assigned a music track as soon as it's detected. Signal strength becomes the volume control. Walking along the street changes the volume. Some tracks get louder and others softer. You are a human mixer. Mixing the music by changing your location. Well, I think we can call this a success. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm really happy. <laughs> now, OK, this is a little eccentric, but as well as the fun of making art installations from beacon installations, this hack actually highlights other, more practical uses for existing beacons. For example, an app that speaks a station's name more loudly as you approach it. It could be useful if you have impaired vision. Or, as you walk to your favourite cafe, your usual order is set aside for you. We could even map information for tourists as they walk past landmarks. It looks like beacons will make us more connected than ever.